In this video, I want to talk about how you deal with panic attacks. Now, just about everyone experiences some level of anxiety at some point in their lives. You know, it's perfectly normal and perfectly natural. But panic attacks are different. Panic attacks can make you feel like you're out of control. Panic attacks are typically unexpected, intense bursts of fear and anxiety. And you may feel like you're losing control and, even more worryingly, you fear that you'll be unable to avoid future attacks, which makes you even more anxious. And panic attacks can also have physical symptoms too, including shaking, feeling disorientated, nausea, rapid irregular heartbeats, dry mouth, trembling, feeling like you're choking, breathlessness, sweating and dizziness. The symptoms of a panic attack are not dangerous, but they can be very frightening and they can be exceedingly unpleasant. And you might even think that you're having a heart attack and are about to collapse and die. Most panic attacks last somewhere from five minutes to half an hour. Generally, they're not fatal, but they can be very nasty and debilitating. And they can come on without warning and leave you fearful of having another attack. So, if you find yourself having a panic attack, the first thing to do is, well, don't panic. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but if you start panicking and hyperventilating, you're only going to make things worse. So you want to remain as mindful and in the moment as possible. Tell yourself that you're having a panic attack and it will pass. You want to breathe in deeply and calmly through your nose and then breathe out slowly through your mouth. Count steadily from one to five with each in and out breath. So you know, in one, two, three, four, five, out one, two, three, four, five, in one, two, three, four, five, out one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And you want to close your eyes and focus on your breathing. Panic attacks are a reaction to the fight or flight mechanism that we inherited from our caveman ancestors. So it is a bit of a hangover to a previous time. And in the caveman days, our caveman ancestors would either fight the woolly mammoth uh, or they would run away from the saber-toothed tiger, usually the latter. That's where a lot of panic attacks come from. It's fear, fear of uh, imminent danger or imminent perceived danger. So even though it is the fight or flight mechanism, nevertheless, it's best not to completely remove yourself from the situation that's caused the panic attack. You want to stand your ground and fight your fears. Unless, of course, the situation is obviously a dangerous one. So if you're having a panic attack because your house is on fire, then obviously you want to get out as quickly as possible. After a while, the attack will subside and you'll begin thinking rationally again. So allow yourself to assess the situation because, as the old saying goes, what our minds perceive, we believe. So when we can assess the situation rationally, often we can see that there was nothing to be afraid of in the first place and this can help prevent a panic attack from reoccurring. You also want to look for patterns and triggers and you want to consider lifestyle changes if necessary. So for example, if you find that you're having a lot of panic attacks at work and you work for a really aggressive shouty boss like this guy on the left, then well, perhaps it might be time to look for a new job. How can you go about preventing panic attacks? Well, apart from avoiding stressful situations, Cutting down on stimulants such as caffeine, alcohol and tobacco can help. So, you know, it's a good time to quit smoking if you find that you're getting lots of panic attacks. Cognitive behavioural therapy, otherwise known as CBT, can also help. Now, this is a psychological treatment that reprograms your brain and helps to avoid future panic attacks. Your doctor or other healthcare professionals should be able to advise you on this. 
If you feel constantly stressed and anxious, particularly about when your next panic attack may be, you may be suffering from panic disorder. People with panic disorder often avoid situations that could cause a panic attack. Often, they develop a fear of going outside the safety of their home, technically known as agoraphobia, and they avoid public spaces and tend to become isolated and withdrawn. This often increases anxiety levels and increases the chances of having a panic attack when they do go out, and so in some ways it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Again, if you feel that you may be suffering from panic disorder, you should speak to your doctor without delay. Now, what if you're with someone who's having a panic attack? What should you do? Well, first of all, you want to stay calm. Reassure the person that they are having a panic attack and that it will pass. If they have medication to deal with panic attacks, offer to go and get it. Otherwise, stay with the person until the attack is over. And encourage the person to breathe deeply and calmly, you know, the same technique that I explained at the beginning of this video. When the attack is over, then help them recover. Get them a chair, offer them a glass of water, that sort of thing. If the panic attack is not a one-off, then you should encourage the person to seek professional help as soon as possible.